Hi, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another reaction video. So let's watch this video. WWE wrestlers who have fought in 4K. Fought in 4K doing what again? So I think that this one's gonna be a really good one. It's a little messy. So yeah, without further ado, y'all about to hop straight into this video. So let's watch right now. But due to wrestlers being public figures, they're often caught out in a lie. Sometimes a wrestler may make a bold statement either in an interview or via social media, and this will later transpire to be completely fabricated. Wait, what? I never slept with him. Holly Berry denies incredible claims she had wild romps with the book. What? This was a rumor at one point? Oh, okay. Fabricated. <laughs> This brings on great embarrassment for the wrestler and they usually respond by going radio silent as they can't handle the criticism. There are also times where fans have been forced to call out a wrestler for their hypocrisy. What? This wrestler once had principles and rules they've gotten back on months or years later and more often than not, they can't even justify their own actions. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who were caught in 4K. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification oh, bell for wow. daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleLamia.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, one? Incredible. Number 10, mm. Mr. Kennedy. Following the passing of Chris Benoit in 2007, several WWE stars past and present appeared on mainstream media. These appearances were designed to defend WWE's honor as it was a ton of backlash centered on WWE, especially in relation to the use of steroids in pro wrestling. WWE star Mr. Kennedy would appear on Fox News following Benoit's passing, but this was an appearance which would completely expose him, as in the interview Kennedy would claim that he doesn't take steroids, and for the most part, everyone believed him. However, just weeks later, Kennedy was named as a steroid recipient in the famous signature pharmacy scandal. Kennedy was simply a liar, it looked incredibly bad on WWE and didn't exactly present the company in a positive manner. Number 9. Braun Strowman Braun Strowman's WWE release in 2021 came as a massive surprise. Strowman was one of the top stars in WWE, but budget cuts resulted in WWE cutting ties with the former Universal Champion. Following his release, Strowman would state in several public interviews that he would not, under any circumstances, wrestle for any company outside of WWE. Naturally, Strowman quickly went back on his promise. Strowman would wrestle on several shows, but it was when Strowman eventually returned to WWE in 2022 where Strowman's lies were exposed. <laughs> Upon his return, Strowman would be claiming in interviews that he kept his word and he didn't wrestle outside of WWE. Our fans were quick to call out Strowman for this bizarre lie and the rewriting of his own career history. Number 8. Chris Jericho the Capitol riots in 2021 revealed a number of wrestlers' political allegiances. In relation to Chris Jericho, he would claim that his wife wasn't present at the riot. However, fans were skeptical of Jericho's claims. Jericho and his wife were known to be Trump supporters thanks to records showing Jericho making a substantial donation to Trump's presidential campaign. Jericho's claim would be disproven when his wife would update her Instagram photo to her being in attendance at the actual riot. His wife would be sporting pro-Trump merchandise and appeared to be having oh, a great wow. time at the infamous event. Social media didn't just call out Jericho for this, but they also made hilarious puns and memes, including one <laughs> fan on social media tweeting, Break the Capitol Walls Down. Number 7. The Boogeyman now, The Boogeyman's WWE career didn't exactly get off to the best of starts. Before he was given the spooky, worm-eating character, he was just trying to get a foot in the door in WWE. The way he attempted to do this was by lying about his age. Back in 2004, during the tryouts for Tough Enough, the Boogeyman would claim that he was just 30 years old. But this was an outright lie as Boogeyman in reality was 40 years of age. Once WWE officials found out about the lie, Boogeyman was cut immediately. However, the what? Boogeyman would get the last laugh when he was eventually offered a developmental deal in WWE. That's when the infamous character was born. WWE executive Bruce Pritchard would discuss the Boogeyman's lie on an episode of his Something to Wrestle With podcast and stated, All I remember was Marty being a part of the big cattle call for talent. And when they got in, he said he was 30. He said, really, are you only 30 years old? And he, he stuck to it, man. And they had him go and they said, oh, where's your license? He said, well, I don't have it here. It's in my car. So okay, great. We'll wait. And everything shut down and Marty's standing there and I said, yeah, we'll wait. He left the ring, ran to his car, got his license, 
came back and gave it to him. Like, Bruh, uh, it has your birthday Marty, on it. you're not 30 years old. <laughs> He's like, Number six, Booker T. Mm. In the aftermath of Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE in May 2022, one of the wrestlers who was overly critical was WWE legend Booker T. Booker would claim that if he was in their position, he would have simply done his job and he wouldn't have broken WWE tradition. Now this was an interesting comment from Booker, but it showed complete hypocrisy. Now, for some context, in 2009 when Booker was in TNA, TNA officials booked him to lose to Matt Morgan. Booker simply didn't like these creative plans and outright refused to lose to Morgan if the creative remained intact. Booker felt so disrespected that he decided to part ways with TNA. This is a similar situation to the one that Banks and Naomi were in, yet Booker simply ignored his own established history and looked like a total hypocrite in the process. Number 5. Shawn Michaels Now the Montreal Screwjob is one of the most well-known controversies in all of wrestling. When the screw job first went down on that fateful night in November 97, Shawn Michaels insisted to Bret Hart that he had nothing to do with the screw job. But in reality, HBK was heavily involved and influential in the decision to screw Hart on his last night in the company. The decision for HBK to portray an innocent pawn was that of Vince McMahon. According to HBK in his autobiography, McMahon wanted to take all the blame for the screw job and wanted to avoid damaging HBK's reputation. However, HBK was notoriously a poor liar, and it didn't take long for Hart to find out the true extent of his involvement. Hart would have a ton of resentment towards HBK for the next 13 years, that was until the two reconciled in 2010 and have since worked together on several WWE related projects. Number 4. CM Punk and One of the wrestlers who was quick to support Sasha Banks and Naomi walking out of WWE was CM Punk. Punk would praise the actions of Banks and Naomi in a number of interviews, but it was one tweet She's which so led to funny. a ton of controversy. Punk would tweet, it doesn't matter if your opinion of your coworker is positive or negative, stand with them, because they'll do the same thing to you and you'll wish someone helped. Trust me, you're expendable. Together, you're unstoppable. Shortly after this tweet, AEW would turn to chaos as it was reported that MJF walked out of the company. Instead of sticking to his own principles, Punk went silent. Punk had nothing to say and ultimately sounded like the biggest hypocrite in the world. Additionally, Punk's comments about standing with his co-workers were examined when talents such as Miro and Andrade were tweeting their dissatisfaction with their AEW position, but yet again, Punk would fail to comment. Number 3. Ric Flair A WrestleMania 24 featured the in-ring retirement of Ric Flair. Flair following his last match would promise that he would never wrestle again, as he wanted to honor the legacy of the match with Shawn Michaels. However, just a few years after the WrestleMania encounter, Flair would be wrestling in TNA. These matches were poorly received and Flair was called out for going back on his word. Once his lackluster TNA run had come to an end, Flair would state that it's finally it, his in-ring days are officially over. But then in 2022, it was announced that Flair would be coming out of retirement for one more match. Flair would team with Andrade against the duo of Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. This was billed as a last match of Flair and Flair was adamant that this was the last hurrah. Unfortunately, just a few days after the match had taken place, Flair informed the media that he regretted saying it was going to be his last match, as he has a desire to wrestle again. Oh, Fans felt disrespected, now. but this was nothing new from Flair as he's made a career out of fake retirements. Number 2. Hulk Hogan A Hulk Hogan can be called several unflattering terms, with the liar perhaps being the most common. Hogan has made a number of unusual claims throughout his life and a strong portion of them have been disproven. Take for instance the time he claimed that he was supposed to star in the 2008 hit movie The Wrestler. When Hogan first revealed this, fans took it with a grain of salt as Hogan's <laughs> acting ability was certainly questionable. Embarrassingly, it was later revealed by the director of the movie, Darren Aronofsky, that Hogan was never even considered to be in the movie. And number 1. John Cena Now, The issues between Cena and The Rock that were presented on TV in 2011 and 2012 were very much real. The Rock took issue with comments Cena had made to the UK media. Cena had stated that The Rock is a hypocrite for claiming he loves WWE and wrestling in general, but then distancing himself completely and going off to Hollywood. The Rock believed that this presented him in a bad light. It was one of the reasons The Rock decided to work a program with Cena. However, in recent years, Cena has done the exact same thing he initially right. criticized The Rock for. Cena has left WWE behind and is now a full-time Hollywood megastar. Cena has starred in several hit movies such as Fast and Furious and even his own HBO Max show. In Cena's defense, he's discussed his hypocrisy at length and he's revealed how sorry he is for his initial claims and realizes how stupid they sound in hindsight. Yeah. Well, they have it, folks. Hit no. WWE wrestlers who were like, bro, you have 
like several Hollywood movies. What it is, is that you had your eye on Hollywood too. You wanted to be in Hollywood and make movies and do whatever, whatever. And it just sounds like a little, a little bit of jealousy, maybe. A little bit of envy. I don't know, but that's kind of weird that you have the nerve to criticize The Rock for doing what he did, distancing himself. And going, you know, Hollywood or whatever, making movies, and he can just do it himself. That's what people do. People do that shit. When they see somebody else doing something, they always got something to say about it. Because, like, deep down inside, that's actually what they want to do. Or they think it's a good idea. It's just that somebody else has done it first. So it's like, I'm going to, like, shit on that person and talk shit about it. Even though deep down inside, that's really what, that's really what I want to do as well. And it's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? It's it's okay to like branch off into other things, you know? Um basketball players wanna be rappers and rappers wanna be basketball players and they sometimes diddle and dabble in that shit. And by the looks of it, you know, a lot of wrestlers they wanna be movie stars and there's nothing wrong with that, but bro, don't be a hypocrite. Like, come on. But um yeah, that's gonna do it for this reaction, y'all. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys later.